It looks like WWE has some major plans for WrestleMania 41 in Las Vegas. This according to the man himself, the reigning WWE champion, Cody Rhodes, may have just revealed what WWE could be planning for the main event of arguably the biggest WrestleMania of all time. We're also going to talk about the possibilities that this could lay out, as well as some major injuries to TNA talent at a recent TNA taping in Detroit following Bound for Glory weekend. All this and much more in this video. Be sure to smash that thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released. Okay, so one of the big questions in many people's minds right now is the future of the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, the WWE Championship, and this whole saga surrounding the bloodline. Right now, it looks like as if they are going their separate ways, but there is potential that that could not be the case for long. As according to Cody Rhodes in an interview I believe he did with Vegas Revealed, he responded to rumors regarding the main event of WrestleMania 41, saying it's going to be unexpected. Quote, For those who kind of keep an eye on the rumor, I bet you what they say, I bet you what they get at WrestleMania 41 is unexpected, even to them yet. Even the people who can follow this, the diehards who feel like they've got their finger on the pulse, this one's going to be tough. This one's going to be unexpected. It's the best way to put it, put in the best ways. That's the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes about WrestleMania 41. So, obviously, the main scenarios that many people are claiming that could take place are either Cody versus The Rock or a variation of The Rock versus Roman Reigns. And that seems to be the case with everyone. Everyone just assumes it's going to be one of those matches. However, after the main event ending of Bad Blood, where The Rock came down and interrupted both Cody and Roman as they were celebrating their victory at Bad Blood, that kind of changed things. Because remember, Cody said that what they saw, what the fans saw in the main event of Bad Blood and, and, and the way that show kind of, of ended was going to change the way that people viewed Mania and was going to change the way that people viewed the immediate title picture for Cody Rhodes. So when we have that, and we have Cody saying, you know, what's going to happen is unexpected. I think this gives more credence to the idea that we are going to see a triple threat in the main event of WrestleMania. I've said this before. I said this after the bad blood appearance by The Rock. And I do think that it is true. I think the end game here is a triple threat at Mania. Because we have three kind of tangled storylines at this point that all seem to be converging in this moment. You have Cody and The Rock, the feud that we didn't really know that we needed until we got a glimpse of what it could be. The beatdown that Cody Rhodes got at the hands of The Rock in Chicago in the lead-up to WrestleMania goes down as one of the best segments in the history of Monday Night Raw. It changed the feeling of this entire feud. It went from, you know, a, a feeling of confusion and kind of, man, they, they it feels like they changed everything up at the last minute because Cody wasn't the actual guy who was supposed to be in the main event. And then suddenly he was because of the fan outcry. And people were still kind of getting used to the idea, okay, well, he's back in. And then that changed everything. That hooked everyone. That made this feud serious. You have that wrinkle and what these two could be. And, you know, again, there were talk or, or there was, you know, a, a an, an outcry from fans the people wanted to see Cody and The Rock at Mania, and that was a more intriguing match for people than was Cody versus Roman. So you have that, but then you also have the flip side. In the midst of this bloodline civil war, Roman Reigns returning as a monstrous babyface, 
and The Rock just returning as a monster. The final boss is here to not only take away the mantle from Roman Reigns as the head of the table, but he is here to take control of the Anawai family. And I think that's kind of the story they're telling. This goes back to, you know, the, the different looks that Roman and Rock would give each other. This goes back to Roman and Rock having that stare down at, at the end of SmackDown. And, you know, the stare down at that Vegas press conference leading up to Mania 40 last year. It goes back to Roman Reigns delivering a spear and costing his team the match at WrestleMania 40, which ended up leading to him costing, or costing himself, excuse me, the world championship at the next night. So th th there's so much, you know, story to be told there. And I think if we're talking about what could be unexpected, you know, people think, well, it has to be either or. We either have to get the singles match between Rock and Roman or the singles match between Rock and Cody. But I think what they're going to end up doing is a triple threat. Rock, Roman, Cody, winner takes the People's Championship and the WWE Championship. You want to do something big? You want to make sure that your main, your main show, WrestleMania, is as big as it could possibly be at Allegiant Stadium. You're charging like $50,000 a ticket, apparently, or whatever they're charging. I just saw the Mania ticket, so that is crazy. But you're charging an exorbitant amount for tickets. You're making people fly out to Vegas Easter weekend for two nights of Mania. You want to make sure you deliver. One thing I can guarantee you, that triple threat would deliver in just the spectacle of what it is. Now, on the flip side, if it is not the triple threat, then I think we get into some interesting possibilities. Because in that case, I would say, if you, again, you're trying to go along with this vibe of making this the biggest mania of all time, the unexpected thing that I would do is night two, or night, well, actually, no, it doesn't matter. One night, Give me Roman Reigns and The Rock. The match that everyone wants to see. The match that everyone has been promised at this point, And the match that they've been building up for years. Give them that match. And then the other night, for the WWE Championship, do Cody Rhodes versus John Cena. And I know what you're wondering. Why would you do John Cena? Where, where'd he come into all of this? I don't think that there would be a better antithesis to Cody or to John Cena's final run in in WrestleMania than Cody Rhodes because in many ways he represents an updated version of John Cena but also a version of John Cena that many fans kind of ex uh, accepted without seeing you know the John Cena word life stuff you know Cody was like Superman before he was anything else when he uh, returned to WWE and fans just loved them. So I, I think in that respect, he's like an updated version. I think that given it's John Cena's WrestleMania, you could have seen a win. His 17th title, which for WWE, as far as th what they recognize, would be a record. That could be big. And again, you want to do something unexpected. Ooh, that is what you do. And speaking of unexpected things, guys, I didn't expect to like the Ridge Wallet as much as I do right now, guys. This thing, the Ridge Wallet, I got it in leather just a couple of weeks ago, and man, oh man, have I enjoyed the hell out of it. I am not someone who likes big, bulky wallets that you have to, like, stuff in your pants, and then you got to sit on it. No, 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 I ain't about that. I'm all about having a compact, small wallet that I can fit my cards into, that has a little pouch or a little band that I can put my money in and that lets me just live my life. Not have to worry about the, like a big bulky thing in the back of my pants sitting on it and feeling back pain. I don't like that. I slips right into my uh, right side pocket or my left side pocket, whichever pocket I'm feeling. Uh, great product. And today, guys, I have an exclusive offer for you that's only available for the next three days. Expires on Halloween. So here's what you do. 
You go to the link that is tagged both in the comments and the description. You go to that link and you save yourself 10% on a Ridge wallet. Why the hell would you want to carry around a big bulky wallet? Why the hell would you want to carry around all that stuff when you can have something nice, compact, that's easy to take in and out of your pocket as well as easy to sort? You can hold up to 12 cards, comes with a lifetime warranty and a very high success rate and it's real take endorsed. So go get yourself a Ridge wallet. Check out the links both in the description and in the comments. As we move on to our next topic, Let's talk about some honestly unfortunate news coming out of TNA as two pretty big time wrestlers for them have been injured. Multiple injuries to TNA stars coming out of the Detroit tapings in uh, the fallout of Bound for Glory. Let's first talk about uh, Vakingo. So Vakingo, he faced off. Um, against Mike Bailey at Bound for Glory. Things went great. It was a great match, very well received. And then, unfortunately, the taping at the next night in Detroit, he suffered an injury. And this is the update we have according to PW Insider. El Hio del Vakingo appeared to suffer a leg injury during tonight's TNA Impact taping. Vakingo was stretchered off by legitimate EMS after hitting the ground hard from a springboard dive. Very unfortunate there. We also have an update courtesy of FightfulSelect.com in a free post that they actually posted on their Patreon They said the following about Chris Bay, who's also suffered an injury at the latest set of TNA tapings. Quote, Chris Bay sustained a serious injury in Detroit at the TNA tapings. The match and show were ended. The only post show with only the post show meet and greet following the injury. We don't have details on how the injury occurred, but that it looked to be a very serious one. Bay was taken to the hospital with a neck injury and underwent surgery We're told he's recovering, but details beyond that will be kept private. Bay is widely adored within TNA Wrestling and is a big part with the company repairing its relationship with New Japan Pro Wrestling. New Japan requested him for dates years ago after years of not working with TNA. We send our love to Chris Bay and wish him well in recovery. The same can be said about me. I really hope Chris Bay, because... What we're hearing about that injury, you know, surgery, and anytime you talk about the neck, it, it like that's just a horrible situation to be in. I genuinely hope like he's able to recover and just you know live life and 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 come back to wrestling. That would be great. But first and foremost, his health is of the importance as is the health of Vikingo. So hopefully both of them are able to you know rest up, get well, and get back to what they do best, uh, and that is professional wrestling so shout out to them for that but uh it ends you you know a very tumultuous week for tna obviously they had a big show bound for glory in detroit it was a raucous crowd really nice crowd there uh and just for this to happen in the fallout of of that especially to two people who vikingo you knew that they kind of had uh been building him up he had not been wrestling on aew where he kind of had risen to prominence on North American TV, but he had been on TNA. He'd been uh, almost a regular at this point for them uh, in the past couple of weeks and months. But to see him kind of go down and Chris Bay, of course, someone who, as the Fightful Select article kind of noted, is someone who helped repair that relationship between New Japan and TNA, which for multiple reasons was not well received in the original relationship because people forget Back in like 2007 ish, like the mid to late 2000s, TNA and New Japan did have a relationship. Yeah, so you saw Tanahashi come into TNA. You saw Kazuchika Okada come into TNA. And one of the big gripes that New Japan had for a very long time about that was the way that their stars were presented. They were presented as jokes, they were presented as unserious. They had Kazuchika Okada, literally one of the greatest wrestlers in the history of Japan, come out there. And dress up like a sidekick from the Green Hornet. It was horrible. Not well received by fans. And there's a reason why they didn't work with uh, TNA for that long. But eventually, you know, 
thanks to people like Rocky Romero who helped build the bridge back to North America, and as well as you know Chris Bay, uh, like that relationship was doing very well, and you saw a lot more crossover between New Japan and TNA in recent times. Even Okada coming back and and doing a spot in in TNA earlier this year. So hopefully they both get better, and and hopefully you know they're able to just do what they do best because it's it really sucks man anytime you see someone injured like that especially uh serious injuries no one wants that so shout out to them guys let me know what you guys think about this in the comments section below what do you think is going to main event wrestlemania 41 in las vegas i want to hear what you guys have to say so let me know in the comments section also be sure if you haven't already done so to leave a thumbs up subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released